The narrative in this election is that Theresa May is hyper-cautious and shies away from any risks. So it's odd, then, that the Conservative manifesto contains so much challenging news for one group, above all others, that actually votes pensioners. And the Work and Pension Secretary, Damien Green, is with me now. Uh, Damien Green, welcome. Good morning. Thanks for coming in. Do you recognise this document? Uh, I do. <laughs> Who produced it? The Conservative Party. And what does it contain? It contains uh, a, a very uh, forensic dissection of the fact that the, the way... Detailed costings, the, we, we could say. The way Labour approaches any problem is to say there is a magic money tree. All we need to do, we don't need to reform anything, we don't need to change anything, we just need to take money off businesses and people and that solves the problem. We know, okay. and because so, we, but you, you and agree, I remember you, the 1970s, you'd agree, that is what this would You would this agree would this is very detailed costing. Uh, I would agree this, this exposes the Labour manifesto for being just a charade. So here's another document. Why does this have no detailed costing at all? Why is this an uncosted document? Because the, the difference between the Conservative Party and the Labour Party is that we produce realistic policies to deal with the real problems of this country, some of which raise money... Isn't that or just some of which standards? spend No, we, we, some of our, our pledges uh, are to spend less money or to move money around uh, so that the, you know, it's spent in okay. the right places. It's spent well, supporting people, not just saying, oh, well, the only solution to everything is more money and we're going to do that by taxing British business. That's, the, you know, people... Uh, you were talking about the, you know, this overexcited weekend we're having at the moment. I think this will focus people's minds on the fact that in less than a month's time, Jeremy Corbyn could be leading the Brexit negotiations. And, and given Labour's complete lack of credibility, nonsensical economic policy, as, as well as their other policies, nobody surely wants that. So you mocked them for the money tree and all the rest of it. They have given us quite detailed accounts of how much tax they'd raise and from whom. You haven't. Let me talk, if I may, about the black holes in your manifesto. You say that you're going to spend another £8 billion on the National Health Service. Where is that money coming from? Th that money is there. We see it because we... we it's, not, it's extra money. We produced a budget uh, a few months ago, so all the detailed costings for Conservative policies are already there. This is extra money for the NHS. And I'm just asking you where it comes well, from. It can come from extra taxes, extra borrowing, or cuts somewhere else. So it, which of these it, is it? A, a, lot, a lot of it is, is retargeting money from uh, within the system because we know uh, we can do things okay. better. It's how we can promise okay. uh, more support for mental where? health, for instance. Uh, well, from various parts uh, of the NHS and the other parts of the public sector, for example, uh, one of the things you've been talking about earlier uh, Michael about Fallon social care. In this programme last week said there was going to be an extra billion pounds from the, for the armed forces in this manifesto. Where does that money come well, from? Well, I, I, I was about to give you an example of uh, one of the things you were talking about earlier, where we are now going to target uh, winter fuel payments on those who really need them, and that money. Uh, the money that we save from that can be targeted to uh, the health and social care system. That seems to us uh, a sensible way of dealing with okay. one of the big issues uh, facing the country. How much money are you going to raise from t um, cutting winter fuel payments? Uh, well, it depends where we, we set the level. No, we, said we, we said we'll we consult on that. We know it, 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 uh, okay, it costs about two much? billion. So uh, well, most, that's, most of that that's, two billion. That's, well, it, we'll see because we haven't, as you know, set the well, level exactly. Of it is the, an uncosted black hole document. It's, it's not uncosted because we haven't we haven't said <laughs> we are going to spend X billion Damien extra Green, on health. May. We are saying that the money we save. Uh, on the, the winter fuel payments going to Mick Jagger and Bernie Eccleston and indeed John McDonnell, uh, that would be better spent on the social care system, which needs more money. Everyone okay. agrees that. Lots of people watching this programme are not Mick Jagger or indeed very, very wealthy. They are pensioners wondering at what level they're going to lose their winter fuel payments. Well, that's why we said in the manifesto... And they're very concerned. And you're not going to tell them. We will, we will consult so that to everyone who uh, is in... in you know, genuine need uh, of the winter fuel payment will still get it but we think the money that's currently being spent on people who, who, who need it less many of whom have come up and said to me over the years 
really, should, should, should I be getting this? That money is better spent in a social care system that we all agree is one of the great challenges facing our country. The difference between our document and the Labour document is that we actually deal with the big challenges facing this country. Theirs is just a wish list. Can I put it to you, the difference between the two documents is that you have got teams of clever people trawling through the Labour Party promises and costing every single one of them and telling people what it might cost and where it's going to come from. And your document, those clever people, are saying nothing to pensioners watching this programme who need to know before voting day whether they're going to lose their winter fuel payments or not. Do they not deserve the, that information? The, the, the un well, it, the, they will know that if they are in genuine need of the winter fuel payment, uh, they will still get that. We are going to set that at a level. What does, genu what does genuine need what, mean? What, what you said, well, that's, that's what we're going to consult on after the uh, election because that's the sensible way to do it. That's the way a, a grown-up government will operate, will say, okay, here is a manifesto, here's our broad proposal, a proposal uh, which causes interest among commentators. It's and not so commentators knows. who are interested about this. There's pensioners watching this programme wondering, if I vote Conservative on June the 8th, does that mean that on June the 15th I lose my winter fuel payment, yes or no? Well, they, and they, lots of them need to know that, well, it's not commentators. And, and, and they will be able to contribute to the consultation. But they will know, those pensioners will know that uh, we have massively reduced pension of poverty. One of the proudest things that successive governments have done is that in the 70s and 80s pension of poverty was 40% of pensioners. We've now got that down to 14%. I'm really proud that we've introduced the auto-enrolment system that means that 7 million more more people are now saving for a pension so that we'll be able to provide more security and dignity in old age for more people. Through the generations, we're looking ahead. We're not just looking okay. at the election. We're thinking long term about the big challenges. We have somehow slipped sideways away from winter fuel payments. Um, can I put it to you that you start by cutting this, you're going to take it away from virtually everybody and the reason you're going to take it away from virtually everybody is you need that money and one David Cameron said at the time of the last election you could, um, he's talking about the, the then Labour policy to take winter fuel payments away only from the top 5% by restricting these benefits aggressively or abolishing them altogether is the only way you make big savings and he went on, once they have started chipping away at these benefits, believe me, before long they'll start getting rid of them altogether and we'll be back where we were, the people who have worked hard all their lives being written, about, written off and forgotten about. Well we've identified social care as one of the big issues that you know, both old people obviously uh, care about, but also their mm. children, uh, younger generations as well. And we think that restricting winter fuel payment to those who genuinely need it, and, and you know, whoever we, they may we, be, we, we as a country will decide what that is uh, in a proper consultation, which is the way government should operate. But actually, releasing You'll that decide, money, but you won't for, tell people now. Rele releasing that money for use in the social care system is absolutely a good way forward to start improving our social care system, which is vital for so many people. At the same time, as uh, allowing okay. them to keep their home, uh, allowing them so, to know they can pass on £100,000 uh, to you, their you've children. Me you've mentioned social care a lot, so let's turn to social care. Can you remind those people watching what the Conservative policy was in 2015 on social care? How is it going to be paid for? The, the, the social care policy uh, was, broadly speaking, to continue what's happened before. Uh, and the there was a cap, wasn't there? The, 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 well, it was, it was the, the Dilnot proposals. And, and the cap was? What the cap, what, well, the, 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 the amount people could save was, was 23,000. That was, and what was, that, the, what was the cap on the, how much The cap was pay? going to be about 72,000, I think. 72, still exactly, yes. and that was the but, policy. But the, well, yes, but the policy as, as it is, uh, I think, uh, it needs to be changed for two reasons. First of all, uh, we know that there are going to be two million more uh, over 75s in 10 years' time, which is great. We're all living longer. You knew that That's in good. 2015, yes. but you have but, broken that promise. Well, let's, let's talk about the 2017 manifesto, shall we? We haven't broken that promise because what we've done uh, is devised a better system. The, uh, the idea that, that the only thing people could pass on was 23,000 has now been replaced uh, with our idea in the manifesto that they'll be able to pass on 100,000. That's four times as good. It is, except the crucial difference is that the value of their house, if they have been cared for at home, is now taken into account as an asset. Now, taking a constituency at random, let's think of Ashford in Kent, where the average value of a house is £240,000. If there is a, a widow, a Mrs Smith, living in an average house in Ashford, under the new policy, how much extra might she have to pay? Well, she, she won't have to... If she's living on her own, uh, then she will be able to uh, stay in her house 
uh, throughout her lifetime. If, if she's not a widow, yeah, uh, if she's, she's married, but, but her, she, how her much... spouse will be able to stay uh, in their house for their lifetime as well. So well, this, if she's this a widow, there isn't are... a spouse. I'm, no, no, I'm, no, I'm, but I'm, I'm, clearly, I'm, I'm um, so extending I'm, it. There will I'm, be other I'm people just who are So she, she's, she's got dementia, poor woman, and she's being looked after in her own home in Ashford, an average priced home in Ashford. How much extra is she going to have to pay under your policy? Well, she won't be, be paying anything until... not while she's, well, her estate will not, be. Yeah, well, exactly. So she won't be paying anything. Uh, she ah, doesn't... She, okay. she can stay at home. If, if she is able to, uh, to be cared for at home, then quite rightly, she so will be able to stay there. The, how much extra does the, the estate the, have the, to well, pay? It, well, it will depend on, on what the other costs are. But what she can... What her, her children can know, or whoever she wants to yes. uh, leave money to, well, is that whereas before... You will have guessed she, that I have the answer she, for you, well, which is it, that she's going to pay an extra £70,000, twice what she would have been paying under the previous policy. Why should she possibly well, vote it, Conservative? I, I, I suspect that that figure re requires some heroic assumptions. It doesn't. She, she should vote it Conservative, doesn't. and, and her, her children should vote Conservative, because they will know that w whatever level of care she needs, so this, this removes that terrible decision of how long should you, you try and keep someone at home or maybe put them into residential care, which is a, a real decision that many families okay. have struggled with. That, that decision needn't be influenced by financial considerations anymore. Everyone can be confident that because they will be able to hand swipe on... money from no, the state in due no, course. No, precisely not, let, because let, we're let going me to ask you. let them inherit uh, £100,000 as opposed to the £23,000 okay. that was there before. That's well, a let, much better let's, system, let's, a much fairer system. Let us talk then about inheritance and cascading the wealth through generations and take a different example, this time Twickenham which is a seat where Vince Cable for the Liberal Democrats is fighting you very, very hard. An average house there costs £545,000. And if, we, again, we take a couple, the chap's got an early onset dementia, he's been cared for in, her, in, in his home. And they've got a little bit of money in the bank, but not much. Under your proposals, they could lose virtually everything. Their children and their grandchildren, who are hoping to inherit some of that wealth, won't be able to. Well, th th when you say virtually, what is virtually everything... Well, I, it, I think it was going to be 500, it's now 100. 100,000 uh, pounds uh, is, Among is, a, five is, children. is a reasonable uh, inheritance to have. Um, and people who are lucky enough to have had uh, great rises in property value will still, I think, uh, decide that 100,000 pound mm. is, a, is a better way of doing it. But, but you, this has got to be put in the context of this is funding the social care of system. Of course, I, abs if, I understand but, there is a problem. But, well, but yeah, I'm but, just asking you about your answers to but, it. Well, our answers but, to that problem mean that more money goes into the social care system. Everyone knows that there will be a decent inheritance for them. Nobody will have to lose their home during their lifetime or the lifetime of their surviving spouse. This is a much fairer system, and it's a much more sustainable used system. Conservatives used to believe in inheritance. We, this is we, a vast secret inheritance tax. No, it's not. It's, yes, it, it is. It, 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 You're a member of the what, Bow Group. You're a member of the Bow Group. Yes, you've written, yes well, you've written stuff for the Bow Group for yeah, many, long, many years. A long time ago. I haven't Bo, the Bow Group Bo, for a long time. You're a kind of Bow Group guy. No, I'm not. The Bo, you don't know the Bow Group now. The Bow okay, Group the, has gone off... On a, well, the on, Bo a, group, on a journey. The Bo, Bo Group says this is the biggest stealth tax yeah. in history. And the, and the Bo Group is, is wrong. Um, we are saying that everyone can inherit uh, £100,000, regardless of the costs that uh, the state and therefore the taxpayer has paid to them. One of the big issues that's facing this country is intergenerational fairness. So we've... Yes. We, this, but there this is system also is the fair, fairness about fair the lottery, to older people. The lottery, let, me, okay. let me finish this one. You've also got to be fair to people working now and paying taxes that is the only other way to pay for the care system. So this system we are proposing is fair both to pensioners and particularly that, that minority of pensioners that may need long-term care, but also to working taxpayers. And that's, that's the question you want to ask John well, McDonald. Okay. How can he justify... I, I, I'll, I'll ask you the questions I want to ask him. Life is unfair generally. It's very unfair that some people get dementia and some people don't. Under the original Dilnot system, we pooled the risk in society after a certain threshold and spread out the unfairness. If you are very unlucky and you get a terrible disease that means that you're being looked after at home, maybe a stroke where you don't return to work or whatever it might be, you're being looked after at home, then the rest of society will come in and help. You don't have to pay again. Under the new proposals, you are basically on your own for most of it. Here is what Sir Andrew Dilnot himself has said. People will be left 
helpless, knowing that if they are unlucky enough to suffer the need for care, they will be entirely on their own until they are down to the last £100,000 of all their wealth, including their house. And that, he was right last time and he's right now. No, I think, I mean, the, the, there, were, there were two problems with what Andrew Dillock proposed, and, and it was a, a, a serious set of proposals. Uh, one is that the, the social insurance uh, he, he proposed as a way of doing it, uh, there's just no, there are no products there for it. The, you know, that, that market uh, doesn't exist. And, and the other, of course, is that, that his problem of, of, as it were, setting a cap rather yes. than uh, mm. a floor uh, meant that the, the distribution of the benefits uh, became wildly uneven. Uh, you know, we are you know, a, a, a party that, uh, you know, Theresa May wants a country uh, that works for everyone. So it's got to work for people, you know, not just in Ashford, though, clearly I care about them, and, and Twickenham, but also uh, in Hartlepool and in North Wales and in Scotland and so on. And okay. so allowing everyone to know that there is this flat figure of £100,000 is fair to everyone. Very briefly, in Ashford and Twickenham and Scotland, lots of other places, people hate this policy and it makes them very, very nervous indeed. Is there any chance at all you're going to look at it again? No. Um, but what we said in, in the manifesto, incidentally, to, just to, right. okay. to put that no in context, is that we have set out this policy, which, which we're not going to look at again. Uh, there will be a green paper covering both social care and health it, uh, coming out in the summer, because we all know that the long-term solution to the social care crisis is better integration of the NHS and right. social care. That's, that's the aim of our policy. This is the first step along that road.